me show you the tools that you'll need to get started soldering. This setup that I'm going to show you can be used for soldering silver and gold, which includes precious metal clay. The first thing that you'll need is a fireproof surface to solder on. I have three different surfaces here and I use all three of these. I like each one of them for different reasons. The one on the bottom is a solderite soldering board and this is an asbestos free board that uh, makes a great soldering surface. This one is hard. There's also a soft one that I can use um, to dig grooves into or drill holes or um, insert pins to hold my work in place. The next surface is a honeycomb soldering board. This is a hard ceramic surface. Um, if I was to drop it, it would break very easily, so you have to be kind of careful about that. But um, it has these perforations in it, and these perforations help to dissipate the heat so that you don't overheat and melt your work as you're soldering. I also find that I can put pins to, place my, to hold my work into place so that it doesn't move around while I'm soldering. And then this is a traditional jeweler's soldering surface. This is a charcoal soldering block. And it is charcoal, so it's a little bit messy. But, um, but it's a great surface for soldering because it absorbs oxygen. And oxygen, when it combines with copper, creates something on the surface of the metal called cupric oxide. And um, if it's heated long enough and hot enough, it can cause something called fire scale deep in the metal that has to be ground off. So this uh, surface that absorbs oxygen helps to keep that from happening. Then you're going to need something called pickle. Pickled is a mild acid that dissolves the cupric oxides that are formed on the surface of the metals, of the copper bearing metals, as they're heated. What I do is I mix about two tablespoons of this silver prep mix with two cups of water in a crock pot turned on high. You can also make this in a glass pan on a stovetop or a stainless steel pan on a stovetop. Either one works and heat it to boiling or near boiling and place your freshly soldered pieces in the uh, silver prep solution and it will dissolve away the uh, cupric oxide or the oxides that are formed on the outside of the metal leaving it nice and clean. It also gets rid of any flux or any other residues, dirt or whatever that's on the surface of the metal. And we also use uh, copper pickle tongs to put things in and out of the pickle pot, um, the crock pot or your pan, whatever you're using, you would call your pickle pot. And the reason that we use copper is because when that cupric oxide is dissolved from the surface of the metals, that bit of copper, basically it's kind of uh, burned up copper, is floating free in the solution. And if you were to introduce iron into the pickle pot, it causes an automatic plating action that will plate any metal that you have in your solution. So to avoid doing that, we use copper pickle tongs to bring things in and out. You can also use plastic tongs, or uh, we have a stainless steel basket that's handy for have when you have small parts that you need to move in and out, because it can be a little difficult sometimes trying to fish these little tiny individual jump rings from the bottom of your uh, crock pot or your pickle pot. Then I use these type of tweezers. These are called fiber grip tweezers. And the fiber grip is great because when you're heating something, when you're soldering and there's heat, you're holding something with this tweezer, the heat is going to transfer up the, um, up the metal surface here and it'll get your fingers pretty hot pretty quick and makes it a little difficult to hold on to. So this fiber grip, grip keeps your fingers cool. I also use another version of these that is a crosslock version and these work like a third hand so that I can put something into the tweezers and hold it in place while I'm soldering. Another tool that we're going to need is a solder pick. This is a titanium solder pick. This titanium is excellent because solder resists sticking to the tip of it and sometimes when you're doing soldering operations and you're right in there maybe I've got a piece of chip solder that I'm placing um, it can get stuck to the tip of your solder pick so the reason I use the titanium is because the titanium resists its sticking and then I don't find myself having to grind off and file off 
um, solder that's gotten stuck to the tip. You'll also need a torch. This is a micro torch. It's a butane uh, torch that is great for small soldering operations. It's very easy to use. Um, what you do is you fill, fill it with butane from the bottom here. Just insert the tip of the butane uh, container in here and press and it fills it up in just a few seconds. And butane can be found anywhere that uh, smoking supplies are sold. Um, what you do to operate it is pull down on this little switch here and then press the igniter and then to keep it on you push this little button here to hold it on continuously. And on the other side there's this adjustment to adjust the flame for more or less fuel. I'll show you how we use this. You want to pull down on the lock, press the igniter, and lock the flame on. And you can see the flame here that I've got. Um, there's an adjustment here. This little part rolls so that you can adjust more or less oxygen and get a different type of flame. So I'm going to open this up further and get a more of an oxidizing flame. And then I can turn the gas adjustment down. And then to turn it off, you just press the igniter button again and it automatically shuts off. And then you're going to need solder. This happens to be paste solder. This is what I like for beginners because it's very, very easy to use. There's different types of solder and this particular paste solder is made for silver. If you're soldering silver, you need silver solder. If you're soldering gold, you need gold solder. If you were to solder gold to silver, you'd have to make a decision as to whether you wanted to use silver solder or gold solder. Because you can see, if I was to take gold solder and, and solder something silver with it, there would be a little uh, patch of gold solder that you would be able to see. So I always want to match my solder to the, um, to the metal that I'm using. The solder comes in wire form, sheet form. You can also get wire that has solder, uh, sterling silver wire or gold wire that has so a core of solder in the middle of it. So all you have to do is add flux and then just solder it. But this paste solder I like for beginners because it's already got the flux in it. And flux is something that is used to, um, al which allows the solder to actually flow. If you didn't have flux, your solder would never flow. You could melt it and it would just sit in a ball and it would never go anywhere. So flux is the thing that, um, that, that allows the solder to flow. And this paste solder has the flux in it already, so all I need to do is um, fire coat my pieces and apply my paste solder and then apply the heat. The way that you use this is by removing the tip and, and I can press the plunger to dispense more solder. And what I usually do, these things come with a uh, couple of little tips, but I've never found those tips to be very handy. It seems like the consistency of the solder is too thick to go through the little tubes. So I do usually just take a wire and pull out, or a toothpick, pull out what I need for um, my soldering operations, place it where I need it, and then just put the lid back on.